-hmm. Yeah, good evening, Brother Joe. Um, brothers and sisters, I'm very honoured um, to be the moderator for this evening session of Wondrous Dharma, a review of the Lotus Sutra. Uh, I must express my sincerest appreciation to Brother Joe uh, for making time uh, to be with us. We all know, Brother Joe, you better every second to be with us. Um, so on behalf of everybody, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to you. And with me tonight, uh, there are Brother Eddie, Sister Sharon, and Brother Dr. Eugene. I'm truly thankful to all three of them uh, for taking their valuable time to prepare and share their takeaways uh, of the various episodes with us uh, this evening. So, um, it's Dr. Eddie online? Yes, I'm online. <laughs> Dr. Eddie, hi, good evening. Uh, yeah, Dr. Eddie uh, is our first sharer. As everyone knows, Brother Eddie uh, has been extremely diligent uh, in the promotion of uh, vegetarianism uh, and the healthy 21-day uh, 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 challenge program. Uh, though I've yet to uh, take this program on personally, but I have been an active promoter of this program, especially when I see those people who need it. Um, Brother Eddie will share with us uh, this evening uh, on the episode 688, Bringing Peace and Stability to Sentient Beings. And the stanza reads, one who has not attained the Dharma of the sages, yet claims that he has, has an arrogant mindset. And this is known as overbearing arrogance. Claiming one has realized what one has not is overbearing arrogance. We must thoroughly awaken to the four noble truths and the 37 practices. So over to you, uh, Brother Eddie, I will stop sharing from here. To all the brother and sister. Uh, yeah. uh, today I would like to share something that uh, I learned and uh, how to reflect on myself. Okay, so and in that episode, Master mentioned very clearly that we need to understand our Dharma and then not only understand, we must remember it. Okay, after remember it, we must apply to our daily life. Then only we can call it, we have attained it. Okay, so uh, she also mentioned that uh, external conditions like people, matters, and objects uh, always can affect how the way we apply the philosophy or the apply the, the Dharma. And uh, and this really happened uh, uh, to me. Uh, there's an incident about, uh, I think, three weeks ago. Okay. So we all know that uh, doctor is to save lives. Okay. But uh, I never imagined that one day uh, uh, a doctor do not uh, uh, cannot save a life uh, in, in an incident. Oh, uh, I, I must tell you a story. A real story. Okay, happened about three weeks ago. Okay, so one day when I'm when I'm examining a patient, a child. Okay, uh, with a uh, sitting on the mother's lap. Okay, then suddenly while I examining, mother tell me, doctor, doctor, doctor. I said, what is that? What happened? Look at your back. Look at your back. Okay. Then I look at your back. Nothing there. Then I continue to examine. Then the mother said. Doctor, doctor, I say, say, why? Behind you, got blood one. Okay, then I look at the back again. Then what? What there is? And she say, tell me, uh, it's a mosquito. It's a mosquito. Okay. So, uh, is it like it like it behind? Can someone? Yeah, it's a bit lagging, brother. Brother Eddie. 
I, I, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You can't see my slide, right? Can you hear my slide? Yes, doctor to save life. Doctor to save life. Okay, so then I, 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 I saw a mosquito, okay? Uh, a mosquito there, okay? So at that moment, I tell myself, you know, first thing the percept come to me, do not kill, do not kill, okay? So, and then the doc, uh, then the patient keep on telling me, doctor, mosquito there, you no. Know? So what should I do? At that moment, I, I tell myself, uh, should I kill the mosquito or not? Okay, for if a normal condition, I may tell that I leave alone, the mosquito is all right, no problem. But at the moment, I tell myself, hey, you are a doctor, how patient think about you? Okay, you know that there's a problem in the mosquito and you don't do anything on the mosquito. So uh, finally, Dr. Adi, Brother Adi, we, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, what will you do on that situation? Okay, uh, of course, uh, I tell, uh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, can hear you now. Oh, okay. So I, I'm telling myself, uh, uh, what, sh what will I do if, if I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a not a doctor? Am I not a doctor? Okay, will I kill the mosquito? Or I kill the mosquito just because uh, 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 I have out of pressure from the patient. I'm, I'm more care about what patient think about me as a doctor when see a mosquito and don't kill the mosquito, okay? Uh, sometimes even not able to behold their percepts, okay? Uh, and and I, I, I hope uh, uh, Brother Joe will be able to enlighten me in, in the case, what, what should I do at the moment, you see? Uh, uh, this confused me for a few days actually, okay? Uh, uh, that's my, my, my sharing. Okay, so that's the decision that I've been influenced to apply uh, the percepts into my daily life when I face an uh, obstacle with uh, people. Brother Eddie. Eddie, we lost your, we lost you there. You lost me. Uh, I think the did internet. Did you kill? Or did you not kill? I, I, I think the the, the internet connection there. I, I, uh, the internet connection there. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I can tell you a story. Finally, out of the pressure, I use my hand. Okay, to 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 slightly slam on the table. Okay. And I can't see a mosquito. I'm not sure whether the mosquito is dead or fly away. I have no idea at all. But I tell myself, okay, I act this uh, uh, because of the pressure from the surrounding. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how patient think about me as a doctor who can let a mosquito fly away when the patient already warned me the mosquito is there and the patient expect me to do something. But I didn't. Uh, 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 so. Uh, uh, that's my sharing. So, but I'm not sure what is to be the ideal way to do things in this situation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, brother Eddie, you acted under duress. So let's yeah. hear from let's hear from brother Joe now. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Eddie, and um, thank you, Sister Carping. Um, uh, it's first. First of all, I think um, I've always enjoyed. Uh, tremendously when I listen to Dr. Eddie uh, share his stories. Always, there's always some kind of uh, stories involved. It's not just straightforward um, telling you the Dharma or telling you uh, the, 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 the rules. And, and, and I like that. And I think that's probably what Dr. Eddie does for his patients. Um, uh, never quite tell you directly 
but always trying to uh, I don't I, I don't mean to say hidden agenda, but uh, always trying to have some dharma in it. And I think that's uh, that's that's what I find tremendously enjoyable. Okay, so um, regarding uh, this particular episode and also what Dr. Eddie said um, uh, for doctor to save a life, I think uh, just like what Sister Carping said, uh, so under duress. I think um, one of the things that um, that um, Master taught us was that you have to be who you are, who you believe you should be. And I think for you, for you, what, how would a doctor, how would a doctor, uh, how would your patient think of you is important, yes. But how would they think of you as a person? Um, and I think that's, that always requires explanation. For example, uh, I would like to say, you know, if, if you could discuss afterwards, you know, if you could discuss with the patient afterwards, perhaps the patient um, does not mind that you letting the mosquito go. Perhaps the patient does require you to kill it. Uh, that part, maybe you said, maybe I don't hear it during the lag, but, um, but however it is, if it were me and I'm the talkative type, so I'll go ahead and ask, what would you think killing one mosquito would do to this world? Would it bring down malaria? Would it bring down dengue fever? Would it bring down any of the things that supposedly this particular mosquito does? I don't know. And that's not what I'm going to do. What I'm hoping to do is that we're not bringing down the agents that does the bad things. I think we have to bring down, we have to bring up the positives that we share with each other. And I think that's what Master taught us too. It's not to focus only on the bad things that's happening in the world, but to, own, to raise, the, raise the awareness of what we should do for this world. Let's look at, let's look at not how much the, uh, the, um, the it, it's, it's, it's more about, um, Master always tells us that when these insects or these bugs come about, what we can do isn't trying to kill them right away because if you don't go to the, get to the source of the problem, it doesn't really solve the problem, okay? So um, what is the source of the problem? Usually it's, and I'm not saying that that's what, what's happening in Dr. Eddie's clinic. What I'm saying is that, um, you know, when there are, you know, uh, cockroaches or other things happening around, I'm not, and I'm already deviating from this example, okay? So please don't, don't get me to say that that's what's happening in Dr. Eddie's clinic. That's not what I'm saying, okay? But Master always gets to the root of the problem and try to solve it that way. So the problem of the disease spreading mosquito happening isn't quite because the mosquito loves to spread disease. It happens because of a bigger global issue or a bigger environmental issue. That's what we had to do as our part to save. And that is what Master has always been doing is purify the heart. That is why everything trickles down to this part. If you could do that, many, many things would resolve on its own. Instead of trying to figure out how, how to bring down the suicide rate or bring down the, the homicide rate. Rather, what we should do always is to focus on how do you bring up the education so that you can help more people. And that is actually what uh, what this episode 688 is talking about, amazingly. 688 talks about the Four Noble Truth. That tells you that you start by life is suffering. And then you tell, you figure out how it gets to be that way. And then you make the vow to say, I want to, I want to get to the bottom of it and get rid of it. And then you figure out a way to do it. And the way to do it is the 37 principles of enlightenment. That's how we're supposed to solve problems, right? Getting rid of one enemy isn't going to do anything. Getting rid of one mosquito, yeah, it doesn't do anything. How, what would it do for the entire bigger part of the epidemic? It doesn't. But rather what we can do, what you are doing, is bring in 21 days of, of vegetarian diet. That has a much, much better chance and a much more substantial way to change the world than killing one mosquito. And I'd rather do that, and I'd rather everybody focus on doing that than someone focusing me on trying to kill a mosquito because that's not gonna change much in the world. But we can do something more. Would you join me? That's how we can change the world. 
not going out to kill every mosquito in the world because that's not going to change a whole lot in terms of the entire world. So that's how I feel. And, and, and I think that's what exactly what the Four Noble Truth tells us. I think it's a way for us to diagnose the problem. I think it's not for us to, um, so, so in this episode, uh, Master talks about, we always think that we know. We always think that, yeah, 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 I know. But what are we supposed to know? I think that for this particular one, the Four Noble Truth is telling us how to look at a problem. How do you solve a problem? By first looking at it, what's the result? And that's the suffering. And then you look at how you get there and that's the aggregate. And then you make the vow to say, I wanna to get to the bottom of it. I wanna get rid of it. And then you figure out the way. How do you do that? Well, you break it down into 37 steps. You break it down into the mind, the body. You make you break it down into what is the cause, and you break down you break it down into how do you do it one step by step. That's what happens in thirty seven principle uh, principles of enlightenment, and I think that's how a very scientific Buddha was explaining to the to the disciples how we're supposed to get rid of the problems that we face, not just the afflictions, but all problems that we face in the world. Yet we keep on memorizing only the words, that one example, and then thinking that we understand it. So to me, I always think that it's a much bigger framework that the Buddha is teaching us to adapt to this world. The Four Noble Truths will only be the Noble Truth if it adapts to the world and it adapts to your life. So it adapts to what your problems are, and then you use it to fix the problems by looking at it, by figuring out how to get there, how you got there by making the resolve to end it and then bring the solution and make it into 37 pieces and then you do it one step at a time. That's how we resolve it. And I think that's what the knowledge and the wisdom is teaching us that we could you know, resolve the problems this way. So that's my, that's my feelings for uh, the, the, the four noble truth and the 37 principles in alignment and for that mosquito and for Dr. Eddie. I'm sure you have a very clean and tidy clinic. Um, but, uh, I, and I hope that this, this particular response finds, uh, you, you find it okay and acceptable. But I'm also willing to hear from other people uh, what they have for Dr. Eddie uh, for, for your mosquito problems. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Brother Joe. And it's uh, interesting that Dr. Eddie brought up mosquitoes because mosquitoes just love me. So the only way for me to, you know, I, I'm the source of their problem. So the only way for me to prevent myself is to splatter myself with lots of uh, mosquito repellent so that they don't come to me. <laughs> okay, uh, next, is, uh, next up is uh, Sister Sharon. Um, well, Sister Sharon is three hours ahead of us in Sydney. And I'm truly, truly grateful to her for staying up so late tonight. And uh, Sister Sharon has been very diligently following Master Sun Pasyang, and she has been sharing with us many of her uh, valuable experiences in how she applied the Dharma. So for tonight's sharing, Sister Sharon uh, chose uh, episode 677. So uh, Sister Sharon, if you can share your screen. Brother Eddie, did you stop share? Ah, yeah, okay. So um, episode 677, the supreme wonder of permanence, joy, greater self and purity. The stanza reads, taking all practices of teachings, principles, actions and realizations. Know the teaching of the Four Noble Truths to reach cessation by eliminating the causes of suffering. Practice a path to find liberation and put an end to the dust-like delusions. Uphold precepts, samadhi, and wisdom to practice the supreme offerings. Over to you, Sister Sharon. Thank you, Sister Kapi. Um, we, all, we all must learn the Buddha's way through our daily living because it is just by learning the Buddha's teachings, we can recognize that this is the Dharma. I believe if we can practice the Buddha Dharma in everyday tasks, if we can learn to interact with people and handle matters while remaining grateful, understanding and accommodating, 
And if we know how to cherish our own blessings by creating more blessings, then the Dharma water will flow forever, bringing purity to people's hearts. Every day, every word we say and every action we take is all part of the Dharma in our daily living. To exercise the Dharma, to come into contact with the Dharma and to experience it, all of it, can we find ways to take in all the practices. By upholding all these practices, we can then understand the principles of what is good and bad. Realizations will then naturally come in through these practices, observations and experiences. Realizations is one of the most important aspects of any teachings. Let me share a little story which I experienced myself as I walked the Bodhisattva path with Sir Chi. This story is about a lady called Annette, a mother of eight. Sir Chi Sydney has been delivering meals to her community since October. She lives in one of the government housing communities in Sydney. I first came into contact with Annette when she went into the community to pick up some storybooks for her children. I remember she had a very heavy and sad look on her face. We talked to her and before long, she opened up and told us her very sad story. Her husband locked up her two children, aged eight and nine, inside the house and burned the whole house down while she was at, at work. She got a call, rushed home and found the fire brigade and firemen carrying out two burned and lifeless children out of the house. A memory she told me she will never forget. The children were very burned um, as if they were just came out from the oven. I still remember that's exactly what she said. They were rushed to the hospital emergency and were placed in ICU. I could feel how painful, sad and upset she was as she cried. She told us she feels so upset that she finds it so hard to put on a brave face in front of her children. She has to be so strong as she not only has to care for her two children in ICU, but also six other children at home. She told us that she has been sitting and sleeping on the floor as all of her belongings were burned. Without delay, Sachi sprung into action. We wanted to help to relieve her suffering by being her companion, uh, giving her a shoulder to cry on and giving her courage, hope and faith to live on. We asked around for some secondhand furniture and before long, we got her a couple of beds, tables and chairs, a fridge, a washing machine and some heaters. She was very grateful. For me, by coming into contact, putting all the practices in front of me, I, I slowly learned more and more and understood more and more of the teachings, principles and realizations. Retaining and practicing is the method of our school Teachings, principles, actions, and realizations are the Dharma door of our school. Buddha taught us that the first step through this Dharma door is to know the teaching of the Four Noble Truths. The truth of suffering, truth of cessation, uh, truth of causation, truth of path to cessation, and truth of path, the path to the cessation of suffering. Firstly, the truth to reach cessation is through eliminating the causes of suffering. Even the most tiny afflictions, we must try to eradicate. Secondly, to be liberated from suffering, we must find, we must first understand the cause of suffering. We need to understand that because we have accumulated much karma that we suffer. Thirdly, how do we bring this suffering to cessation? We must create good karmic conditions straight away, uphold precepts, samadhi, and wisdom to practice the supreme suffering. We must e eliminate our dust-like ignorance, empty our mind, make our mind a space with no afflictions. How then do we go about to create a mind of no afflictions, a mind with positive affinities, a mind with a good karmic conditions? One way is through giving. When we are willing to give and help others, we are creating causes for future blessings. Now I would like to share this little video with everyone. Annette told me that she never told her story to Channel 9 News or Channel 7 News, or as a matter of fact, uh, not a single magazine, but agreed to be interviewed by us. She trusted us, and I really, really appreciate that. Actual frame, a bed to sleep on. It's, I feel it's my home. 
。经历了丈夫纵火、房屋全毁、孩子严重死伤，安妮特仿佛掉进了地狱。Thank God, I found my angels. You're my angel. I found you, and Jesus has helped me believe again. Jesus actually helped me believe that. 一个月内，慈济职工三度拜访，政府公寓逐渐有了色彩。静思雨也修补安妮特受伤的心。You made me believe everyone deserves help. Everybody needs help in this world. So I want to. I know it's not much, but I hope my little bit of contribution would help somebody. 一手擦干自己的眼泪。一手为需要的人储蓄幸福，安妮特已经重建自己的家。来，新闻之善美之工陈慧玲、严秀聪，澳洲报道。Annette is very grateful to us, but actually, I feel very, very grateful to her. It is only when we have the opportunity to practice, then we can open our hearts to others. The path, the path we need to take to find liberation. To put an end to our own dust-like delusions. Next, if we can must if master our patience, we will eventually attain the great power of samadhi. And once we have the power of samadhi, by continuing on being diligent, we will eventually attain and manifest our great power of wisdom. We bought her food for the fridge and some Christmas presents for her kids. The next day, we received the devastating news that the youngest son. Eight-year-old had just passed away in ICU. She was very upset. We were by her side, comforting her and giving her strength to soldier on her journey. We told her that she is the pillar for all her children to lean on, so she must be strong. And we will be the pillar for her to lean on. We will be by her side to support her and, most importantly, to let her know that she is not alone. But sadly, two weeks later, we found out that her little girl. With third degree burn, had also passed away. These pictures were taken the taken the day we found out that her nine year old had passed away. Annette had been crying and hasn't hasn't been eating for the last one to two days. When we saw her, we talked to her, comforted her, and managed to get her to eat. It wasn't easy for me myself to hold back my tears to support her, but I but I know we have to be strong for her. Losing two children in a month is very, very hard to bear. She cried a lot that day,、um, but after letting all her sadness and suffering out, she, she managed to put on a smile, as you can see from these pictures. With patience, sorry, with, pa with patience, we practice contemplation of our virtues of bodies, body, speech, and mind. We must work to be replete、uh, with. These virtues as our essence to the pathway of enlightenment. As with the story of Annette, I feel that all of us can can、uh, put our learning into practice through carrying out our Buddhisawa work. We continuously practicing our patience, diligence, and wisdom. We became more understanding and accommodating. Bodhisawas are adorned with these virtues and replete with compassion and wisdom. These are virtues of permanent. Joy, greater self, and purity. First of the four virtues is the virtue of permanence. Our true suchness is like this. This is a state of forever unchanging, unwavering, truthful, and genuine. This is like no one forces you to do something; it comes out from your heart. No one forces you to help others, but you willingly want to do it yourself, sincerely. The second one is the virtue of joy. As you open your heart to help others without desire to seek for anything in return, not for any namesake or wealth gain, you will find peace in yourself, and from peace, you will feel joy naturally. The feeling of joy and happiness in yourself when you see others happy and that you can make a difference, you can put a smile onto someone's someone's face. The third is the virtue of greater self. Greater self is a medium to carry out the practice. This is our own intrinsic nature, and is the purpose is free. This is like when we give love to others; it doesn't cost you anything. But because of your greater self of wanting to give love or help others, you exercise it freely. This is your greater self. And the fourth one is the virtue of purity. You are so pure; your mind is not contaminated. 
and uh, not afflicted. You are liberated from all impurities. This is like giving without asking anything in return. Just sincerely. As long as there's a need, we shall do it and do whatever is necessary to help others. The Buddha was replete with the four virtues of permanence, joy, greater self, and purity. This is what we must study and work hard to achieve. So this vehicle is subtle and wondrous, foremost in purity. If we continue to cultivate our heart and mind, we can also be replete with all these four vir virtues. As we empty our mind of afflictions and ignorance, comes wondrous existence of true principles, which can help us to adapt to all phenomena and to harmoniously practice the supreme offering. As with Annette, we continue to care for her, support her in the hope that she will soon gain her strength back to walk the path in front of her. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Over to you, Brother Joe. Thank you. That was a, that was a very heartfelt story. Uh, thank you, Sister Sharon. And thank you for, and th thank our Australian brothers and sisters, and brothers and sisters in Australia, not Australian brothers and sisters, but thanks our brothers and sisters in Australia, Sydney, uh, to, to help um, Annette to get through this very, very difficult time. I, I, I think, um, I thank you for um, leaving on this page. Okay, this page is the good page that I wanted to, that I wanted to uh, go a little bit further on. Um, as we know that this particular episode talks about the four virtues and I couldn't have done it better to split it into the four different photos and each one through doing, explaining what the four virtues actually mean. I love the first part when it says, no one forces us to do it. It comes out from our hearts sincerely. This is permanence. I think that is so true. I think we sometimes connect time and impermanence. We connect the idea of permanence or impermanence to time, but it's not. Um, Sharon does it so well to translate it, to say that what is permanent? If you actually, if that flows from within naturally and it comes out all the time, then that is permanent. No one has to tell you. It just comes out naturally. It's almost like a spring that, that always comes out with, you know, always filled with water. And that is permanence. Um, I think that's a very poetic way to, to put it um, when it comes out naturally from our hearts. Um, that's a very lovely way to say it. Um, joy, we find peace. And from peace, we find joy. I, I like that. Um, I like that. I think a lot of times that people in this world right now, um, the reason why there's so many conflicts around is because they're just in, they're just not enough inner peace. Uh, we're always in conflict. We're always either in conflict with people around us or things around us or with ourselves. So to be able to find peace, I think, I think that is joy. But I, I like to extend on the third part, which is greater self. I think, um, I think you experienced it today. Uh, you experienced it on that day too. Um, uh, the reason being that I think the idea of greater self is you already feel as a net. You felt her. You felt how she felt. You, whatever that happens to her, is almost like happening to how, you know, the feelings are happening to you. And I think that is the idea of the greater self. When you feel beyond your body, for example, when master says that you have to tread lightly for the fear of hurting the ground or hurting the earth. And the idea is that she has this greater self that she can feel how the earth feels. And I think when you express that day when she got the news um, that her nine-year-old daughter passed away. And the first day when she got the news that her eight-year-old son passed away, you, know, you were there and you, you, you were sad too. And just now, just then when you were sharing, you also tear up, you felt that. And I think that is greater self to be able to, to feel the, the, the hurt of so many living beings you know, when, when you talked about, when you talk about 
animals being slaughtered, or you talked about just one, even just one animal that died, or maybe you heard about Dr. Eddie and that mosquito, and then you cry. That is greater self because you felt more than just yourself. And I think that's what I would uh, I would put on that um, as as greater self. And then lastly. I think the virtue of purity. So these are the four virtues that is so different from all the things that we were taught to learn in Buddhism, right? So they're supposed to be impermanence, right? They're supposed to be suffering all the time. How could you have the idea of self and also that the idea of pure, it doesn't exist because it's all, you know, we have been tainted. And, and this upends that. And Sharon showed us that it can be the, the way, it can be the truth, the permanence, you know, you uphold the idea, this love, and, and because it's natural to you, right? If it's natural, then it's not made up. If it's not made up, then you could always do it. That is permanence. I think all of these are very special. So thank you for sharing with, our, with, with the story of Annette, and then we have the best wish and the best hope for, um, for I think, her I think what um, six other children, right? Six other uh, children that are still, they are safe and they are healthy. And we hope that Annette is able to, for the sake, at least for the six children, that, you know, she be healthy and she be okay. And I'm sure uh, she, now she's moving to the government housing, at least uh, hopefully there's some financial stability. And I'm sure she's still being cared for um, by our, brothers and sisters in Australia, Sydney. So keep up that work and be with her because I think she needs it in order to be with her six children. And I think when they grow up, I'm, I'm sure, I hope that they will find it, they will remember that there are these, you know, as, as, Sharon, as, as Annette said, she's found her angel. And, and, and I hope that the six children will remember that rather than remembering the two brothers and sisters that die because of this very, very sad trauma. So um, thanks, Sharon. And you should take care of yourself too. You shouldn't get too, um, too, too attached to it, but it's important to be um, showing care. But I also worry that, you know, that, that, uh, that, that you are too sad also. And that's not something that, that, that's also something that we couldn't bear seeing that you're also too saddened by that because you're always smiling. And we couldn't bear to see you cry. Okay, yeah, so take care. You. Take care, Sharon. No, Bill. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Brother Joe. Thank you, Sister Sharon. That was really, really heartfelt. Um, yeah, our next uh, Cheryl is Brother Dr. Eugene, uh, who is part of our TIMA group, and he uh, resides in Singapore. So he actively participate in uh, many of our outreach program. He's also a translator for the Wednesday Kaohsiung Dhamma sharing program. In addition to master, there is another common link between me and Dr. Eugene. Uh, that is Dr. Eugene's brother, uh, Mr. Tankop Yu, who is my ex boss in WICAR and UBS. And Mr. Tang not only uh, helped finance uh, Brother Eugene's uh, medical equipment and medication for his medical outreach, uh, Mr. Tang also donated a very handsome sum to Tsuti International School. So it is our mission now to bring uh, his brother back to uh, Hualien to meet up with uh, Master. But first tonight, Brother Eugene's focus is uh, sharing on episode 681. Uh, if you can share the screen now, Brother. Brother Eugene, can you share screen? Okay, got it. Yes. Just now yeah. I have to uh, turn off the video because Sharon brought some uh, tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so Brother Eugene. We, 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 are, we are just enli <laughs> enlightened beings. <laughs> so <laughs> we are just human beings. Okay, today I'd like to share on uh, episode 681, uh, Eliminate Delusions of Views and Thinking. Um, well, in terms of eliminate 
delusions of views and thinking. It's just a question of, I think, um, mindset. To me, it's a question of mindset. Uh, you know, I must pay tribute to many people on different platforms like uh, Sister Xiu Ching, uh, Sister Effie. They, they really, on a daily basis, uh, give up themselves in time, effort in uh, telling us about the stories that were depicted in the different episodes. Uh, this, for example, are uh, Sister Sujin sharing on the episode 681. And Sister Effie as well had a very beautiful, beautiful PowerPoint. I learned that is the PowerPoint, uh, how the story that the Master shared. Uh, in particular, I think you, you see a lot of real life stories are around us, uh, a lot of different stories about how families evolve, how families fight over something. And at the end of the day, we, we see this family dis dispute come out in the open court and we get to hear all about them. I mean, this is pretty sad. I think Master did bring up this story in telling us, what, what did, why did Master bring up this story? Uh, uh, Master said, this, this story is filled with human kindness, very heartwarming. In fact, this is a very heartwarming family for, for the grandmother to come out and bow to uh, the convicted person who actually kidnapped the, the son of the boss because he, he was owed uh, eight months of pay. I think this is a very heartwarming story. And uh, Master said that this, this old lady was truly wise, truly wise. He, he actually saw through all the illusions in our mind and actually came out with the three bows, paying respect to the, to the one who was uh, sentenced to, to jail. And Master said that uh, the old lady truly discerned right from wrong. But what do we exactly mean by discerning right from wrong? Uh, and Master said that we have to work to develop proper views and understanding. So I, I would like to just briefly share that. I think in learning the Dharma, we have to be rational. As rational thinking is very important. Like Eddie uh, shared about rational thinking. Should I, should I slam on it and kill the mosquito? Should I not uh, just let the mosquito alive? This is what is right, what is wrong. Sometimes at the spur of moment, we just have to discern that right or wrong. We have to pay attention to the real life examples we see around us. There's so many real life examples of how uh, families fight over fortune, uh, children disrespecting the elders and so on. These are all real life examples. And in the end, we see the, they really end up not in very good state themselves. And some, we are always have to ask ourselves, our thoughts, our actions, do we always stray from the right path? And if we stray from the right path, I'm surely, I tell you, it will surely bring karmic consequences. Uh, and, and it's important, very important to know, uh, be aware of the karmic uh, consequences that we sow now. Because if we sow the wrong fruits, it will bring the wrong, the wrong fruits in time to come. It's just a matter of time. Uh, so uh, I'm a Christian, so I like to share a Christian perspective as well. So the Bible says, you know, uh, do not be deceived. Don't think that you can cheat God, you know. You always reap what you sow. What you do now, you will reap the fruit in time to come. Nobody can escape it. And then Master also tells us, what is truly important? Do we really know what is truly important in our lives? Do you ask yourself, every day I go to work, what do I work for? Do I work for money? Do I work for my family? Do I work for values? Do I work for city? Whether you work for city or work for yourself, what are your real values in life is important. Uh, when, you are, when you are adult, do you take care of your parents? Because your parents took care of you as a baby. I mean, this, this is a very uh, interesting picture because it tells you, oh, I have to take care of my mother. But actually, in the 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, the mother took care of him, him as a baby. So what is our responsibility in life is truly, truly important. And uh, Master also said, we, we, we really must turn from darkness to light. Uh, darkness to light is easier said than done. Sometimes, do we understand 
where is darkness? Are we in darkness? Are we in the light? I think, must, uh, Brother Joe, you can share, share with us, when do we know we are in darkness? When do we know we are having the light shining on us? Uh, I think it's very important. And the Bible always say, do not be conformed to the world. I think a lot of people follow the world. Oh, the world says, this is good, therefore I must buy this. The world say, this action is uh, best for your health. So I, I, I exercise this way in order to have good health. But the Bible says, do not be conformed to the world. But you have to renew your mind that you have to prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect view of good. You have to discern it yourself. But you have to know what is the view in God's plan for you. And Master say, go among the people. All these are all these are all in the clipping that was shown in episode six, eight, one. Uh, I just screenshot them and I show you again. You know? Master say, go among the people. Put it Are we doing that? And other than doing good deeds, what else do you do? Master say you have to seek Buddha's wisdom. I mean, the reason why everybody is here is because everybody is trying to seek Buddha's wisdom, right? Other, rather than our own understanding. Yeah? And uh, <laughs> the Bible tells us, uh, sorry, I have to share Bible verses again. So he say, as obedient children, do not fashion yourself against the former lust of your ignorance. Isn't it amazing? I mean, the Bible has so many familiarities, similarities to Buddhist teaching. That's why a lot of people say, hey, you are a Christian. How come you are in a city? You know, how come you join a, a Buddhist organization? But I tell you, if you really know your Bible well and you know Dharma well, the two of them actually a lot, a lot of similarities. Uh, rather than look at the differences between religion, look at the similarities. Okay. Uh, Master also tells us a very important thing that everybody can go into the great vehicle. At first, when I saw it, uh, are you sure? How can the sinner get into a great vehicle? You know, how can we change mindset? I just killed someone. How can I get into the big vehicle? Maybe again, Brother Eddie can say with us, I just killed someone. How can I get into the great vehicle? <laughs> so we have to reach the great wisdom of all the Buddhas. And important thing is, is God's will that by doing good, you could silence the inner ignorant thought. So the old best way to silence people is to do good and show them, you know, show them. I wish my brother was here. He did good. He showed them what he can do. Very good to silence them. Okay. So don't think that businessmen cannot do good <laughs> because businessmen always make money, right? Make money. So... Other than making money, you can use, use the money to do good, right? <laughs> so is an example. You no, know, I, I went to the charity visit and, and, and we, we, uh, we look at the lady in the wheelchair. I tell you, just six months, six months ago, it was very alive, you know, but per impermanence of life just strike her. And then she has to be taken care of the, by the husband. All these impermanence in life tell us one thing. Do not take your current uh, situation for granted. Anything can happen to anybody. Okay, so uh, just a little bit of sharing. I hope that all of us, all of us, can turn over our thinking and get rid of delusions of views and thinking in our lives. Thank you very much. Just my humble sharing. Thank you, thank you, uh, brother Eugene. Yes, we must not take our blessings for granted. Um, yes, that's something that we, we all have got to and bring in our mind. So over to you, Brazil. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tang, Eugene. Um, so I, I think it's, it's, it's wonderful how, and I, I really like your voice. Um, and I think it's something that would uh, attract me to, to listen to the translation uh, because your, your voice, you have this um, deep voice and the way that you speak is, is, um, is, it's not not funny, but it's interesting that people could a crying be, voice. A crying no, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's a voice that that is deep, that is um, thick, and that can actually, you know, demands attention um, from others because it's very interesting. And um, and I like what you mentioned about mindset. I think, I think like like you said, it's a lot about mindset. 
And, um, you know, what is your mindset? What is your view on so many things? And I like how uh, you, you mentioned about finding the similarities rather than the differences. So darkness, you talked about darkness. And I would like to go from there, right? Um, you talked about finding the similarities. So what does the darkness have in similarity with light? Um, let's find the similarities. I think darkness also has light, just has less of the light. Um, and so how do you know when you're in darkness, when you absolutely cannot find that light? And I think that is a very sad state, even, even for someone who, um, who has lost so much, like Annette from Sharon's story, um, even for that someone, there's also, there's always a possibility of that light. So that's what I think Master and Buddhism is talking about. And also the Bible, I'm sure, in that um, what is, um, what is uh, seemingly to be dark is actually the fact that you just couldn't find the light in that location. For example, this room, if it's all dark, does that mean that there's no light? No, there is. The light, it just happened to be behind the, 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 the blinds. It just happened to be behind the blinds. It doesn't mean that there isn't a light. It's just that it's behind something that you couldn't see. And the whole thing is that, just like Annette, I'm sure for her, the world almost ended, almost ended when she went home and found her house burned, found her two children burned to, like in, to be like in the oven. I'm sure that world came crashing down, right? And I'm sure the world almost ended for her when the eight-year-old son passed away and then the nine-year-old daughter passed away. All those things are what's gonna cover us up so that we don't see the light. And thankfully, there are these angels, there are these bodhisattvas, they will walk in front of them when you don't see the light. Sometimes it's very difficult for people to find light when they're already immobilized or when the light is behind a certain blind and they couldn't see. So the light, these angels and these bodhisattvas will bring light to them, just like your clinic outreach program, right? You bring the medicine to the people that need them and you bring it to them because they couldn't come out. They couldn't find you. They couldn't find it. So you bring it to them. And I think that's what, that's what darkness is, is when you couldn't find it. And it doesn't mean that there is an absence of light. It just means that you haven't found it. It's there. And sometimes it just takes another set of eyes to find it. That's what we are doing. And that is why Sometimes we don't see the light ourselves. People around us will see it. And that's what we're doing for each other. That's what you are doing for your brother too. So that's what uh, Sister Carpe is saying. You know, one day we're going to get your brother uh, to fall to in too. Because he's seeing something else. I'm not saying he's in darkness, no. But we want to bring the light to him so that it could be brighter. So that in his house or in this room that he could see more than what he's seeing right now. And, and I always think that there is always a path. It's just that people choose to end their lives because they think that there is no more road ahead of them. Because there is actually another path that they just didn't realize. Okay, so, so that's how I would like to say for uh, on the part about, about, um, about darkness. And finally, you mentioned about silence. The best way to silence people is to, to do good. And I think on that note, um, on that note, um, it seems like, it seems like we have to do so much more goodness because people still haven't shut up. So we have to do more. And I <laughs> absolutely agree with what you said. The people saying the wrong things, they haven't shut up yet. So that means we have to do more good. I absolutely agree with you on that. So. Thank you all. I think you've all uh, brought such uh, great light to my night here and uh, many, many best wishes. And also thank you, a special shout out to Sharon because it's already near 12 o'clock. It's almost switching to the next day. You're ahead of us. You are able to peek into the next day. 
And hopefully, hopefully, you go into the next day with all of our strength and our light behind you. So you know that you are loved and you know that you are supported by all your brothers and sisters in Sydney and in everywhere in the world. Even though you're three hours ahead, you get to face the next day before us, but you know that we're there with you too. So thanks everybody. And I think this is tremendously wonderful. And I hope I get to do this more, but I don't know if I get more Fridays off like this to be able to share with all of you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Joe. Thank you, everybody. Thank you brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and everyone for the very heartfelt and wisdom sharing. Yeah, thank you, Sister Siu Jing. I'm fun, Brother Joe, Sister Kaping, Brother Eddie, Sister Sherry, and <laughs> our dearest brother Eugene, so very grateful. Yeah, and thanks to all the brothers and sisters for your presence, uh, great support today. Hope that each of us could sustain the Dharma joy and take in another piece of Dharma Masters and while in love to our life. We'll have another great session tomorrow. Uh, catch, uh, catch it at seven o'clock morning tomorrow. Uh, let us invite Brother Joe to lead us in paying homage. Let us please make three bows to the Buddha and Dharma Master to apply these teachings in our daily life. Let us pay our respects to our teachers of life universal truth. House together, first bow. Second bow. And third bow. Okay, got it. Brothers and sisters, uh, we see everyone tomorrow. Uh, there will be a Bye. great sharing by Sister Sihu. Bye, Kanan. Kanan, so much. Yeah, yeah. Kanan, yeah. Nice. wonderful. Wow. <laughs> Miss, uh, many points. Uh, sorry, Sister Sihu Ching and Sister Sihu Ching. Hopefully, the sister is very diligent, even though she can't hear and, uh, yeah, she can't, uh, she can't hear yet. Uh, she's still very diligent, trying to attend all the sessions. Very grateful to her. How Kanan, see everyone tomorrow. And then, Bye. 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 Good night. Good morning. 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 Good mor